No, we haven't. But we have got the ability to do it. Now, let's look at what Keir Starmer actually said himself in his manifesto about what should happen with the European yeah. Union. He said every single part of the Brexit deal needs renegotiation, whether that's free movement, whether that's joining the European army, whatever it is. His own manifesto says he is going to renegotiate every single part of the Brexit. Welcome back to the channel. Did you know that a hopping 99% of you watching right now are not subscribed to our channel? Please hit that subscribe button. Keir Starmer is playing a dangerous game, and most people don't even realize it yet. While the country has moved forward, thinking Brexit was a done deal. Us, Europe is about working together to advance our shared prosperity and our shared security. It's not about being sucked into some kind of European superstate, not now, not ever. Mr Speaker, the draft text set out in full the special status according to the UK and clearly carves us out of further political integration. And they actually go further to make clear that EU countries don't even have to aim for a common destination. This is a formal recognition of the flexible Europe that Britain has long been arguing for. Starmer has quietly been laying the groundwork for what could be one of the biggest political betrayals in modern British history. He's not talking about reversing Brexit outright. Oh no, that would be too obvious. Instead, he's slipping through the back door, negotiating deals and cozying up to European leaders, all while the public remains unaware of the extent of his plans. Could we be on the verge of being dragged back into the European Union? Let's dive into it. And now, I will sign the letter. This is the moment Brexit became law. In an emotional session in the European Parliament, to the sound of song, the withdrawal bill cleared its final hurdle. Dharma's manifesto doesn't beat around the bush. He's made it clear that every single part of the Brexit deal needs renegotiation. Free movement? On the table. Joining the European army? Also on the table. It's almost as if he's forgotten why Brexit happened in the first place. The people of Britain voted to leave the EU to regain control over the country's destiny, not to have every decision filtered through Brussels. Yet, Starmer seems intent on steering the ship back toward Europe, no matter how hard the public fought to go in the other direction. His actions recently are painting an even clearer picture. He's been hopping around Europe, Berlin, Paris, Brussels, all under the guise of improving relationships and collaborations on issues like energy security and illegal migration. He calls it a Brexit reset, but we know better, don't we? This isn't just about trade or security. It's about softening the public up for something bigger, something far more dangerous. A reversal of Brexit through the back door. And he's got time on his side, with the Brexit deal conveniently up for review in 2026. Let's not forget the very reason Brexit happened. Britain wanted to take back control of its borders, its laws, and its economic decisions. Before Brexit, the EU had an overwhelming influence on our internal affairs, and Britain was often left with little to no say on matters that directly impacted our people. So why on earth would we willingly return to that state of dependency? Yet Starmer seems to be dragging us back in that direction, whether the public likes it or not. This isn't just speculation. During his trip to Germany, Starmer met with Chancellor Olaf Scholz and discussed agreements that eerily echo the same kind of deals the UK fought to leave behind. They talked about energy security, joint efforts to tackle illegal migration, and even technology cooperation. It sounds innocent enough, right? But these are just stepping stones to something much bigger. The more entangled we become in these agreements, the easier it becomes for Starmer to justify renegotiating the Brexit deal in 2026, leading us back into the clutches of Brussels. The British people aren't stupid. We remember the battle for Brexit. It wasn't easy, and it wasn't without its controversies, but it was a fight we won fair and square. And it wasn't just about leaving Europe. It was about reclaiming our sovereignty. But Starmer's actions suggest he either doesn't understand the significance of that decision or worse, he simply doesn't care. And that's a dangerous mindset for someone vying to be Prime Minister. Nigel Farage has been calling this out for years. 
When he first started campaigning for Brexit, people laughed at him. But look at where we are now. Farage was right all along. I know you want to ban our national flags, but we're going to wave you goodbye. And we'll look forward in the future to working with you as sovereign. If you disobey the rules, you get cut off. Could we please remove the flags? He knew that the EU's influence was strangling Britain, and he fought hard to make sure we had a say in our future. And now it looks like Starmer wants to undo all of that, without even giving the public a chance to weigh in. If you listen closely, you'll hear the growing frustration among those who voted for Brexit. Isn't it funny? You know, when I came here 17 years ago, and I said that I wanted to lead a campaign to get Britain to leave the European Union, you all laughed at me. Well, I have to say, you're not laughing now. They're not interested in returning to the EU in any capacity. They see Starmer's Brexit reset for what it really is, a slow, calculated attempt to undo the will of the people. Labour enacting their grubby establishment plot to reverse Brexit. Well, yes, partly, I think, is the truth of that. I mean, look, I think for Labour to try and reverse the constitutional position that we now find ourselves in would simply be madness and would be a disaster for them. But realigning us with single market rules, realigning us with every new piece of legislation that comes from Brussels, well, that I think they will do. I don't think we're going to rejoin. I think that would be absolute madness. But we'll finish up with a genuine brino, Brexit in name only, and in economic terms, in competitive terms, we'll ask ourselves, what on earth was it all for? But this time, it won't be about leaving the EU. It'll be about leaving Starmer and Labour behind for good. What's even more alarming is how Starmer seems oblivious to the political minefield he's walking into. The British public won't take this lightly, and the opposition is watching him like a hawk, one misstep, and Starmer's political career could implode faster than he realises. One of my biggest criticisms of the Conservatives since Brexit was finally, finally delivered is we haven't really diverged at all, have we? No, we haven't, but we have got the ability to do it. Now, let's look at what Keir Starmer actually said himself in his manifesto about what should happen with the European yeah. Union. He said every single part of the Brexit deal needs renegotiation, whether that's free movement, whether that's joining the European army, whatever it is. His own manifesto says he is going to renegotiate every single part of the Brexit deal. And do not forget that that deal, conveniently enough for him, comes up for review in 2026. And what this is, I'm sorry, uh, Russell, but, you know, what this is, is softening the British public up with nice things. Court or we'll want our kids end, to be way. able to go and study in Spain and Portugal and wherever else it may in be. Germany and in Germany. In Germany. It is for softening the British public up. They, the, he and his civil service chums know they've got a year to work on us for, ultimately, in my view, a Brexit betrayal in 20. And frankly, if he continues down this path, it might just be a matter of time before the public shows him the door. So, what do you think? Is Starmer plotting to pull the UK back into the EU? Or is this just smart diplomacy? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more updates on British politics.